Welcome to The Shaman's Path, a journey into the realms of ancient wisdom, modern healing, and the mystical unknown. I'm your host, Nicole Berrios, shamanic healer, acupuncturist, and guide on this adventure to other realms of reality. Join me as we tread the path less traveled, exploring the deep roots of shamanism, the art of healing, and the profound connection between the human spirit and the world around us. We'll explore how shamanic healing can transform emotional pain and trauma into strength and resilience. Together, we'll unlock the doors to your inner power, helping you become your best and most powerful self. We'll go down the rabbit hole of consciousness, diving deep into topics like energy work, the spirit world, ancestral healing, past life regression, and how the natural world impacts us. So grab your metaphorical drum and come journey with us into the heart of shamanism. We'll see you on The Shaman's Path. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to The Shaman's Path podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Berrios, and this is the show where we go down the rabbit hole of consciousness, journeying into shamanism and shamanic healing and all of the goodness that this has to offer. I'm super excited because this is my first official episode as The Shaman's Path. I just rebranded. This podcast is formerly known as the Path of Wellness podcast. And upon much soul searching and reflection, I decided that this was the route that I needed to take. And so now this podcast is just all about shamanism. Anything and everything are fair game. If you listen to my intro, I'm sure that you heard all about it. We're going to go way down the rabbit hole. We're going to talk about ancestral healing and the spirit world and past lives and just all kinds of really, really cool stuff. I'm super excited. So for those of you who don't know, I am an acupuncturist and a shamanic practitioner. I have a private practice in Mesa, Arizona, where I can see people in person. And for those who would like to work with me who are not local to the Arizona area, shamanic sessions can be done virtually from anywhere in the world. Because I have a private practice, I have a lot of experience just working with clients and seeing the kind of healing that happens for them. And I am also one who does extensive healing on myself, so I just... I have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to everything in the realm of healing, especially shamanic healing and especially spiritual healing. And so that is what the shaman's path is all about. We're going to walk this path together. And I'm very, very excited that you guys are here with me at the, the birth or the recreation, I suppose, of this new show. So I wanted this show to have a little bit more structure than the Path of Wellness podcast had, and I thought that it would be cool if every episode began with the current astrology, or just, you know, what's currently going on in the stars, what's happening on the planet, like what's happening on the five element cycle, which is a Chinese medicine thing, because I'm also an acupuncturist in addition to a shaman. And how you can take that information and apply it to your life so that you can live your best, your, be your best self. And also to just give you ideas as to how you can work with the current energy so that you can do any personal rituals or personal practices or shamanic rituals or whatever. And I will have some episodes where we have full on rituals together, but I just thought that this piece would be would be good for anybody who just wanted to know what's going on and how they can best work with the energy of the season. So I am recording this episode on Tuesday, October 24th, 
and it should be released on Friday, October 27th. So we are right in the heart of spooky, se spooky season, as a lot of people call it. We're right before the full moon. There's going to be a full moon on Saturday, October 28th, and then Halloween or Samhain or whatever you want to call it is obviously on October 31st. So we kind of have a lot of things happening right now. This full moon that's coming up is in the sign of Taurus. So this full moon is going to kind of be all about things related to safety, security, to finances, to the home, all of that sort of thing. And then we've also got Halloween coming up. And so uh, cultures all throughout the world and shamans all throughout the world kind of think of this time, this not necessarily Halloween, but just like the fall season in general as a transition, like a transitory season. It's in between the highs and the lows. Um, fall and spring are both transitional seasons, like in between where we have the summer solstice, where we have the peak light, and then the winter solstice where we have the peak dark. So the spring and the fall are transitional seasons. And as such, we have the thinning of the veil. If you've ever heard of the thinning of the veil, most people associate that with Halloween time. And it is true, like the veil between realities of like our world, our ordinary reality world, and the spirit world, or we call that non-ordinary reality in shamanism, the veil between those two realms is thinner. It's easier to tap into your intuition. It's easier to connect with your ancestors or with anybody who's crossed over. And that is true for this time of year. It's also true for the springtime as well. And for those who are in the Southern hemisphere who are currently in the spring season. So yes, the veil is thinner. And we also have this full moon. And Basically, what, what this means is that there's a lot of intense energy going on right now. Just between the moon, the thinning of the veil, people get a little bit crazy around Halloween as it is anyways. And so if you are going to be doing any sort of rituals or any sort of practices at this, this time, like right, right now, this week and into next week, what I would encourage you to do is to focus on your home, especially because this full moon is in the sign of Taurus. And what I mean by focusing on your home is maybe giving it a really good energetic cleansing, maybe burning some sage, maybe diffusing some oils, or just going around and intentionally setting the tone for how you want your home to feel and protecting it and keeping all of the, you know, just any bad energy or spirits or whatever out of your space. So if you're going to be doing any rituals at this time of year, that's what I would focus on. You can do this with drumming. You can rattle, you can chant. These are all very powerful shamanic techniques that you can use to just help you get through this season a little bit easier. And one other thing that I wanted to add about this time of year is that astrologically, we just crossed over from Libra season into Scorpio season. It was very interesting how this happened in my house because I live in Arizona where we literally have scorpions here. I don't usually see them around my house, but within the last two days, I have found two scorpions inside my house, one in our den and one in my daughter's room. It always scares the bejesus out of me whenever I see them. No matter how many times I see a scorpion, you know, all the exposure therapy in the world just doesn't make it any less freaky to find one of these things in your house because they're inherently just kind of creepy animals. <laughs> So that was my introduction to Scorpio season, but I bring that up because um, tying it into doing some shamanic practices, Scorpio season, I find, is all about like dream time. So I, I feel like because of the, you know, the full moon and the thinning of the veil and Scorpio season 
in addition to like protecting your home, this would also be a really good time to work on dream work or to do some dream work that could look like maybe um, just keeping a dream journal next to your bed and going to bed with the intention that you will remember your dreams and you'll write them down as soon as you wake up. It could be um, going into your sleep cycle with the intention that you're, you know, you're going to get some healing or some inspiration or downloads from your dreams. It's totally up to you. I just wanted to throw that out there that that could be a really cool thing to incorporate into your shamanic practice for this current time. Moving on to the main segment of this episode, how shamanic healing removes trauma from the body. I, in my private practice, I specialize in helping people move through emotional trauma to go on to be their best selves. This is a specialty that I kind of, it kind of found me. I didn't go to acupuncture school and go through shamanic training with the intention that this is what I was gonna do with my career. It just kind of happened. These are the types of cases that were coming into my office and I discovered that I'm actually really good at treating it. And another thing that factored in is that I had an intensely traumatizing experience um, with the birth of my daughter several years ago and had to undergo my own very rigorous healing from trauma. So I'm very well experienced in helping people to move through emotional trauma and pain. The past couple of weeks on my Instagram account, which is Path of Wellness Acu, for anybody who doesn't follow me, I've been discussing somatic healing. And for anybody who doesn't know what somatic healing is, it's healing at the body level. The word somatic comes from the root word soma, which means of the body. So all somatic healing is, is healing at the body level. Whenever you hear this term, it's almost always in relation to trauma. Like when you hear the word somatic healing, it's almost always talking about removing trauma from the physical body. So what happens is when a person experiences some sort of traumatic event, it impacts them on every level. It will impact a person physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And just as a side note, it doesn't matter what the trauma was. All that matters is how a person perceived it and how it is impacting their life afterwards. A lot of people think that you have to have experienced something horrible in order to have trauma. For example, like everything that's happening in Israel right now, you know, like a lot of us will think like, oh, I'm not living in a war-torn country, like I don't have trauma. You don't have to live in a war-torn country to have trauma. Granted, people that are living in places like Israel, they do have significantly more trauma because of their circumstances. But just because something may not necessarily seem traumatic to one person doesn't mean that it wasn't actually traumatic to a person that experienced it. So even things that might seem trivial, for lack of a better word, if a person at the point in time that they experienced the event deemed it as traumatic, then it was. And everybody has trauma. Everybody who is alive and breathing has trauma. This is just a natural state of being when you are alive. Like we all have trauma. The difference is how that trauma impacts us and how it's affecting our daily lives. A lot of times people don't even really realize that they have trauma. They just think that they have weird symptoms for no particular reason. (laughs) And they don't really know what's going on with them. But a lot of times physical symptoms or mental emotional symptoms are related to trauma that's like buried underneath all of the layers 
So that's what I do in my office is I help people pull trauma out of their physical body. So I don't know what happens in other countries, but I know in America, the standard way of processing trauma, like if, if a person was aware that they were being impacted by some sort of a trauma, they would usually just go seek out um, talk therapy or psychotherapy or cognitive behavioral therapy, which is fantastic. I think that's a really important piece of the equation. But as I mentioned earlier, there's many other ways that trauma impacts a person and the mental part is only one piece. It doesn't include the physical, the spiritual, or the emotional. And so when people receive talk therapy, a lot of times what happens is they can only get so far in their healing before they get frustrated and like give it up altogether because they're still having symptoms. And by the way, I don't think I gave a list of the symptoms. Symptoms that somebody who's traumatized can experience can be um, all over the board. They can range from physical symptoms like headaches or uh, bad periods or, you know, like menstrual issues. They could be trouble sleeping. Um, it could be physical pain, digestive issues that could, especially if um, there's no definitive cause that a person can determine, or if you've gone to the doctors and ran all the tests and everything is negative, you know, like they can't find anything wrong with you, but you're still having symptoms, there might be an underlying traumatic uh, reason behind all of those symptoms. Those are just the physical symptoms. Then there's all the emotional symptoms too. Like there could be anxiety or depression or not feeling like you fit in in the world or um, self-esteem issues. Like it could, it could show up in many, many different ways. And so if you're going to talk therapy and it's not quite helping as far as like your symptoms are concerned, then chances are really likely that you need, you need more work. You need work that's going to focus on the other three layers that trauma can affect your being. That's the physical, the uh, emotional, and the spiritual. Talk therapy is really good at taking care of the um, mental part of it. And this is where shamanism comes into play. That's the title of the episode, How Shamanic Healing Removes Trauma from the Body. Sometimes people ask me if shamanism is like Reiki. I usually tell them that it looks like Reiki, when I am performing a shamanic healing session, I have my hands above a person, not touching them, and it, it looks like Reiki, but it's not. It's, it's different than Reiki. I think shamanic work is more intense than Reiki, a lot more <laughs> intense than Reiki, because what a shaman does when we're, when, like for example, when I'm doing a shamanic healing session, what I'm doing is I am connecting with my guides. This is my spirit team, my power animals, um, my helping spirits, and I'll sometimes just my own intuition. And I'm sensing what is ailing a person. And this all shows up both on the body, like the physical level, and on the spirit level. And what happens is I'll find things that are stuck within a person's energy field that don't belong there. And a lot of times it, we call these like intrusions. Um, and a lot of times these intrusions need to go. And like it's the intrusions that are causing the physical problems that people experience after they've had some sort of a traumatic event. It's, it's almost like the traumatic event can create its own little like entities for lack of a better word. It creates its own entities. It like becomes its own energetic thing that uh, like attaches to the body and is just stuck there. Um, and there's different types of attachments or entities and they can do different things. They can impact the body in different ways, but either way, a shaman can look, can look at a person's aura and find things that are there that don't belong there. And what we do is we pull them out. Like we just yank them out, kind of like yanking a tooth out. And so that's why 
I think shamanic work is more aggressive than Reiki because I feel like Reiki is just like gentle and healing and nurturing and shamanic work is like, oh no, that doesn't belong there. Like, screw that. We're pulling that out like right now. <laughs> and that is how shamanic work removes trauma from the body. We like literally find it at its source and we yank it out from the root. And this is what's missing from talk therapy. And this is why I think sh there's really no, no better way, in my opinion, to deal with the physical effects of trauma than to do shamanic work because we, s we see it at the, at like the energetic level, like it's a very deep level, the spirit level. And once we see these things and we get rid of them, profound healing can take place. Like this is where what might have taken years in talk therapy can take like one to three shamanic healing sessions to just resolve because we're, we're pulling something out of the body that has been causing all the problems in the first place. And then the talk therapy, if you're doing that, is going to be much more successful because then you'll actually be able to work through the stuff because you won't have the physical intrusion causing so many problems. And so that's, that's one way that shamanic healing removes trauma from the body. It's like we literally go in and remove it. Like it's, it's actually kind of straightforward. Like, oh, we see this thing, doesn't belong there, let's just yank that out. And then the next piece that comes into play, once we remove something from the body energetically, um, it creates a void. And wherever there's a void on the energy level when we're doing shamanic work, we need to fill it with something. Otherwise, something else will come in that doesn't belong there and you'll have a whole new set of problems. And the way that we fill the void in shamanic healing work is we fill it with power. And there's a couple different ways that power can fill a void in the physical or energetic spiritual body. And that is either a power animal or a spirit animal or totem animal, all those terms can be used interchangeably or a soul retrieval sometimes both and a soul retrieval is basically when you experience a traumatic event a piece of your soul can break off it's like a protective mechanism like if your soul feels threatened in any way a piece of your soul can break off and just go hide somewhere in the spirit world and uh, so many people need soul retrievals and there's many layers to this. You can have so many soul retrievals over the course of your lifetime because pieces of the soul break off way more frequently than you would think. This is not an uncommon phenomenon. But it is, it is really common for people to experience the effects of having a soul piece break off. If you've ever felt like you're missing a piece of yourself or like you just don't feel right or like something, you just, yeah, it's hard to describe, but I think almost everybody understands what I'm talking about when I mention soul loss. If it just feels like something is wrong in your body and you cannot figure out what it is, something is missing, you're missing a piece of yourself, you can't quite reconnect with a piece or how you used to be in the past when you want to, chances are very likely that you have a soul piece missing that needs to be found. And so that's something that a shaman does too. So when it comes to removing trauma, we go in and we remove the trauma that manifests as some sort of an entity or um, just uh, something energetic in the body that doesn't belong there. We pull it out and then we replace it with something that will bring you power, either in the form of the power animal or in the form of yourself, bringing more of yourself back, making you feel whole and complete again. And so we do all of this work at the soul level. And it takes a couple of weeks for the dust to settle and for people to like really notice the impact of having this sort of work done because the body, the physical body, is always the last thing to catch up. And, and then the brain is kind of like the cognitive part is tied into there too. Like we clear this stuff on the soul level, on the spirit level. And then the body is like, what the heck just happened to me? Like, I don't have this thing anymore. And then you have to work through 
like ego when we remove things and you're like on the spirit level you're a whole new person but you're used to acting a certain way you're used to having pain you're used to not sleeping you're used to having behaviors so there's kind of like an identity crisis that sometimes happens after we do this sort of work but that is how shamanic healing removes trauma from the physical body it's quite literal we just pull it out we just remove it and then it's gone and then we fill it with something that's going to serve you instead and that's really all there is to it This last portion of the show is a segment that I'm going to do every episode and I'm calling it spirit messages. And what this is, is from a shamanic practitioner to you guys, I'm going to give you some sort of a a message from spirit that can just help aid you on your journey, help you on your path your shaman's path, wherever you are in life. And this could either be pulling an oracle card or reading a passage out of a book or just downloading the message directly from spirit or from any of my my spirit team or my, my helpers, my power animals, what have you. It's going to be different for every episode. For this episode, the message that downloaded came came from from spirit in this instance it came from the spirit of the fall or the spirit of the west so as the wheel of the year turns you know as the seasons shift and we go through the year we move into different element cycles and the the spirit of the fall is associated with the great spirit of the west whenever i do shamanic work i always call in the directions this is just a way to orient yourself in space and time to honor the whole you know living world around you and the spirit of the west is the spirit of the fall the days begin to get shorter the nights begin begin to get longer, it begins to get colder, it's a time of retreating, of going within. And from a Chinese medicine perspective, because again, I'm an acupuncturist, the fall is associated with the metal element. And there's there's five elements in Chinese medicine. They're a little bit different than traditional, like you know, four elements of earth, air, fire, um, water, and, and spirit, I suppose, would be one in like more um, witchcraft or Wicca circles, but in, um, and in shamanism too. But in Chinese medicine, there's five elements, and it is uh, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. They do correlate to all of the seasons. The fifth element, which is earth in this case, is associated with like an in-between time called Indian summer. It's like at the end of summer. So we have four seasons. We have five elements. That's we kind of like shove one of the elements into the middle of one of the seasons. But because we're in the metal time of year, there's two organs in the body that are associated with the metal element. It's the lungs and it's the large intestine. So physiologically people are more inclined to have issues with those organs at this time of year and it's no coincidence that this is cold and flu season now because that is all directly related to the lungs in Chinese medicine but these two organs and the metal element and being part of the fall it's also associated with the emotion of grief grief and letting go, especially if you bring the large intestine into this. Like the large intestine, that's its job. It lets things go. 
And so the spirit message that I downloaded for you guys today came from the metal element, from the spirit of the fall, basically. And it is to be comfortable with letting things go and to be comfortable with grieving things that you need to let go of. I see a lot of people avoiding grief because it doesn't feel pleasant and it's uncomfortable and a lot of people don't want to face it and they bury it under the rug and when that happens it causes all kinds of problems and the message that I'm getting for you guys today is to just if you're feeling sad about something or if you're grieving something or if something in your life is shifting or changing and it feels like a loss, like there's a loss of a sense of self or a loss of a sense of security or just, you know, your, your life is shifting and changing as life does. But if it feels in some way stirring up, like it's stirring up sadness in you, spirit message for today is sit with it. Be comfortable with it. Learn to accept it. Don't run away from it. And it will pass. It has to. Emotions are literally in motion. They are, it translates to emotion. Like, emotions have to flow. They just do. And at this time of year, if you're feeling grief over something, or if there's even something old that's suddenly coming up and you're feeling sad about it and you don't want to feel sad about it again I'm here to tell you just let it let it come be sad get it out of your system thank it like acknowledge whatever is coming up thank it and move on and it will be so much easier in your life if you're able to do this you will get through the fall season so much easier if you just allow yourself time to slow down to feel any sadness that may be coming up and to just sit with it and process it and just let it go so that is my spirit message for you guys for today and that is the end of this episode thank you all so much for being here with me thank you all so much for listening i cannot wait to continue walking down this path with you guys and I hope that you will join me on the shaman's path. I'll catch you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this episode and are finding this show valuable, please consider leaving us a review on Apple iTunes, telling your friends, or sharing on social media. This helps us get the word out about the awesomeness of shamanic healing so that more people can discover all it has to offer. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next episode of the shaman.